What you are seeing here is a polyrhythm. Polyrhythms are basically mathematical ways to make music. There's a certain number, in this case we have a polyrhythm simulation that plays a nice to listen to song. And throughout this video we'll learn how you can make this yourself and why it creates such a nice tune. As you can see here there's seven different uh, things seven different half circles with balls each moving at slightly different speeds the innermost ring is the fastest completing the most uh, oscillations in this given period of time the outermost one is the slowest and over time they will all land back at the start at the beginning they were all here and they started diverging but eventually ding dong they all end up at the start and now it'll loop forever so in this video we're going to learn how you can create one and why they eventually end up at the start and why they create such a nice tune in the process so let's close this out and get into it first off i'm use i used visual studio code to create this project and i only needed two extensions the live server extension, which allows you to launch a development local server with live reload features, and the JavaScript ES6 code snippets feature, which allows you to make code snippets for JavaScript and ES6 syntax, as you can see. And uh, four, three files in one folder were needed. So in this project, as you can see, the HTML, there's nothing special here. Uh, I just have a link to the CSS and link to the JavaScript, and then a singular canvas element. In the CSS, we just have something that defines the body to have a background color of white smoke, because otherwise it gets very blinding white. Most of the magic happens in the JavaScript, which is where we have almost everything. First off, we get our canvas and canvas context, which allows us to draw on the canvas. These two variables just define the center of the canvas, specifically the bottom middle. So if the entire canvas were a huge rectangle, this would define the bottom middle. And then next we have definitions of how big the width and height of the canvas is and how big the width is so what this is basically is, is just setting it to that width that's setting the real canvas and this is just making sure the javascript knows how big the canvas is so this is the ui declaration and this is the uh script declaration then we have a, a function to draw one of the rings this it takes in a ring size and the color of the ring defaulting to black if no color is given. And basically we just set the stroke style of our ring to the color, which basically makes the line a certain color. We set the width of the line to three. We begin a path, we make an arc, and the coordinates depend on our size and some values relating to pi. We stroke it and we close the path. This creates a half circle ring at a certain size. Then we have set circle, which basically makes one of our balls. Uh, so basically this creates the ball at a certain X and Y position and then sets the color to a given color or black if none is given. This is self-explanatory. The fill style is basically just the color our ball is set to. And obviously we set it to the color parameter. And again, we begin our path, we create this time a full arc from 0 radians to 2 pi radians at the specified location, and then we fill our circle to create a ball of, of our choice color. Now we have the huge pile of variables. First, this defines the size of all the rings. First, we have the smallest ring, at the innermost ring called ring one, and then it gets, and then they increment by 50 to create a in ever increasing ring pattern starting from the center from one to the outermost one seven. If you haven't inferred it by now by yourself, the goal is to create a rainbow pattern with seven rings. <coughs> 
Okay, this part we'll have to come back to it later, but um, basically this defines a bunch of zeros for the travel rate, and this stuff, again, we'll have to come back to it later, unfortunately. Otherwise, you won't be able to understand. This defines the hex colors of all of our seven rings. And this defines audio files that I've pulled from the audio folder. So how does this exactly work? So the idea is we store the positions of each ball in its, tra in its trajectory. So every ball can either be at position 0, which is all the way on the left side, or position 1,000, which is all the way on the right, or some amount in between. That ring's dist 1,000 represents how far it is left to right on its half circle trajectory from 0 to 1,000. The direction can either be 1, which means the ball is heading right, or negative 1, which means the ball is heading left. And basically what we have here is this function. So we loop through each of the rings, create the ball and the ring, increase the dist 1,000 by the travel rate of this ball and the direction of the ball. If we hit the right end, we rebound to the left and change our direction so it starts going left. If we hit the left side, we start going right. And at either side, we play the audio file associated with this ring. And since we're always going to the ith index of, of something in this list, every single time, say ring 1 hits the left, it'll play ring 1's audio file, and so on. So, okay, we have a bunch of bouncing balls at a certain travel rate, and whenever one hits either side, it plays audio. Then how do they, how do we make sure that at the end of the day they'll all line up and hit, and hit the left side and be in sync eventually? Well, that that is carefully selected math. <clears throat> this is where these travel rates come in and why there's so much math involved. So this is the math part of this rainbow music. So basically, what we've done is we're doing carefully selected rates. <clears throat> I'll use Python to demonstrate the math because I don't want to have to do the math myself. So basically, the innermost ring is meant to go from uh, one side to another 24 times, or 25 oscillations. So... Basically, we also want the innermost ring to be the fastest. So basically, what we can do to find to get a travel rate for each one is... So basically, what we're doing is we've realized there's a, um, 100 frames per second in this animation. So, since there's 100 frames a second, let, I've already decided that I want all the rings to come back to the starting left position after 64 seconds. 6400 frames. So I just take 24 laps, in this case 24,000, remember, we're, we're representing it on a scale from 1 to 1,000 for each oscillation, divided by 6,400 frames, and we set this as the travel rate. For the next ring, we go a little slower, and so on, continuously reducing it by 6,400. And since each ring goes this distance, and we've done the division, this means it'll definitely, after 6,400 frames, be all the way on the left. That's also why each of these total travel numbers are divisible by 2,000. Because every t every 2,000, it goes 1,000 to be all the way at the right side, and then 1,000 again to be on the left. So that way, this ensures each ring will be on the left side after 6,400 frames, or about a minute. And that's why the travel rates get smaller, so that it gets that nice pattern. And that's it. It's basically just a used math to designate carefully selected values, and each time it loops through the list of seven to update every ring and ball position. It uses the canvas arc element to draw, and that's basically it. It's actually quite simple once you have the basic logic implemented. And there's not much complex logic, you're just simply making the rings go left and right.
Uh, I did run into some problems getting the sync to work, but after this, after I discovered that I could just use division and decimal values, it was pretty simple. Uh, at the start, I was trying to use only whole numbers for travel rates, but I took for it, but it took too long to get them to align. Now, enough talk. Let's see how this looks. And uh, we're gonna look through one whole iteration. And then that'll be the end of the video. So let's get started. We can hit go live to use the go live server extension and let's get started. Thanks for watching and see you next time.